Mr. Burkeen for his five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So since uh, this administration took office, we're looking at numbers that tell us that uh, about uh, every year, the population of Oklahoma, the state that I represent, is what's coming across our, our border illegally. Um, we're almost at the point of three times the population of Oklahoma is in our country illegally. It, you know it's bad when the, the mayor of New York City is saying, quote, this, talking about illegal immigration, is going to destroy, he, uses the, he used that word, destroy the city. He's talking about people coming from West Africa, Russia, um, this is the site of Ground Zero. We have 100 people every year the last couple of years. We're now at 140. Um, those are on the terrorist watch list just for this year, 140 that uh, have been encountered. Who knows the number of potential uh, heinous actors have come across that we've not apprehended. Um, Mr. Ballard, I think all of us uh, applaud you, Jim Caviezel, uh, Matthew Faraci, uh, uh, throw out uh, Matthew's name, he's from Oklahoma. You guys are agents of light and the sound of freedom. Um, what you've done to advocate and what you've done to shed light on uh, the humanitarian crisis of the sex slave trade, uh, thanks for being agents of light in a, in a dark situation. Uh, things have been talked about today, the second largest criminal enterprise in the world is the sex slave trade. Every 30 seconds a child is subjected to this heinous act. Uh, the U.S. being the largest consumer of child uh, pornography, third largest consumer of child pornography, and largest consumer of child rape videos. God help our country in this cultural rot. It, line upon line and precept upon precept, we have, he, we have stepped away generation after generation from biblical virtue, and this is where we're at. That's an aside. But for every parent who's not wanting to, to wage in this battle of good and evil, of returning this nation back to our roots of biblical virtue, it might, if we stay silent, it's probably gonna be easier for us, but it's not gonna be easier for our kids and our grandkids. But now let's talk about those children that are coming across our, our border illegally. You'd shared with me earlier, the president of Guatemala told you something pretty profound. Would you expound about what the president of Guatemala told you uh, as it relates to this, this trafficking issue? Yes, I was with uh, President Giamatti last week, and he was just talking about the, the horrifying things that are happening to his people. He started a campaign with his government called Haciendo Visible Lo Invisible, which is to say, making visible what is invisible. And it's basically a warning to the people, don't go with these smugglers, because m most of them are also traffickers. Most of them are abusers. And they, they might play a nice game and, and pitch a nice pitch in the beginning. Hey, don't worry, I'll pay you later. Well, you can pay me later. Yeah, they'll pay with their bodies. They'll pay with other things. Did you tell me that 75%, he told you that 75% of all minors and women that are migrating are subjected to sexual abuse? That's, what, that's exactly what he told me. That's his understanding. So I'm going to continue with that. So we had a, a border sheriff that told us that cartels are utilizing the sex trafficking slave trade um, that are saying to parents, if you can't afford what we're going to charge you to come into the United States because we've become the Uber service to get into uh, the United States for free, we're going to charge you. Um, if you can't afford it, do you have a 13, 14, 15-year-old daughter that we can help pay off your debt? That, that's an interesting note that was told to this committee. We, we, I think you had said uh, in your commentary or something you said in the past that there's 14 million a day, the dollars that the cartel is making. That co corroborates a, another report by the New York Times that says it's 13 billion in 2021 the cartel made off human trafficking. We know there's 400,000 unaccompanied minors that have come across this border since this administration took office. And we've got this massive flow that the administration is not able to vet whether their families are legitimate families or quote, fake families. Would you quickly uh, tell me uh, what the definition of a fake family is and quickly just in, in reference to my time? Be, due, due to the Flores settlement, it's a loophole that the traffickers and smugglers know that if they can get a kid and convince that kid to call her mom and him dad, the, the clients, you create a fake family. And that forces the border patrol to 
to, to let them in within 72 hours and they're all released. The kid gets used and recycled over and over again. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna showcase this. I don't know if the camera will pick this up. This is from US Customs and Border Patrol. This is dated May 19th of 2023, reversing under the Trump administration. We took DNA testing to verify whether or not those young adults were actually with a legitimate family member. They, th this letter says, quote, the US Customs and Border Protection familial DNA contract with with certain technologies will end on May 31st of 2023. The testing will conclude on that date. Samples submitted afterwards will not be utilized. So we know that there's a grand jury in Florida. It said that there were 100 kids sent to San Antonio, or sent to San Antonio, Texas, to one sponsor. What do you think really is happening in those situations? I think when you see that happening, you can expect exploitation. And when you've let you, you've left yourself no option to investigate because you haven't done any follow-up, you haven't done any background work, those kids are now gone, and they are missing. Is this administration complicit, complicit, whether knowingly or unknowingly, in advocating the sex slave trade because of these type of policies they're allowing these fake families to move people into the interior of the United States? I hate to say this, but yes, they are complicit because they know, they do know. I've watched them learn, thanks to C-SPAN. I've watched them learn what's happening, and they continue to do the same thing. Mr. Chairman, I yield. The gentleman yields on now.